Mr. Dale W. Hartley today about his innovative augmentative speech computer program called New Speech. What was your motivation behind New Speech? Uh, Lee's speech was and still is severely compromised as the result of a head injury. He was about to begin a college degree program and could use the keyboard on a laptop computer. And that computer was mounted on his wheelchair. Uh, to complete his college courses, the laptop was essential for Lee to use with email, uh, word processing, internet connection, but there was little room available for a separate dedicated augmentative speech device to also be mounted on that wheelchair. So my plan was to program a text-to-speech synthesizer that could use the same laptop computer. There was need for Lee to be able to access um, short responses with a single key press, uh, to also have easy recall of pre-programmed custom responses, and the ability to compose freeform responses. What is your relationship with Lee? I'm Lee's father. What was your choice of platform and why? The Apple MacBook was chosen for two reasons. Uh, first of all, at that time, Apple had a text-to-speech synthesizer built into its operating system. And second of all, Apple had an object-oriented programming language called HyperCard, which could easily build custom programs. When was New Speech first used? Uh, it was used in 1992 was its first iteration, and that also was, uh, that corresponded with Lee's first year of college. Is HyperCard still used to run New Speech? Uh, no, changes in the Apple operating system no longer supported HyperCard. So in 2012, um, I, along with another, uh, another author, did a rewrite and improved it to run on a programming language called Live Code, which is a uh, HyperCard-like program, but modernized. So, New Speech was rewritten in 2012 in Live Code. Does New Speech still run on your Mac? Uh, yes, it still runs on a Mac, and I'd like to point out that Lee is interviewing me using the new speech program. Can new speech run on other hardware? While Live Code has the ability to run on Macs, PCs, iOS, and Android, uh, new speech would need to be uh, modified to be platform specific. And I have not had the chance to explore that. Do you have plans for future development of new speech? Uh, on Mac laptops, I'd like to enlarge the new speech window to take advantage of the modern high resolution screens. And I'd also like to change the design <clears throat> so that instead of being card based, it has a master library of pre programmed responses that can be arranged into playlists similar to what the cards have now. And of course, I would like to also enable new speech on other computer platforms and smart devices. Thank you very much, Mr. Hartley. This is a demonstration of new speech. You can think of new speech as a stack of index cards with 12 slots available on each card for a text-to-speech response. One of the simplest ways to use this is to simply point at a thing with the mouse, point at a response, click the mouse. It's called New Speech. And you get whatever uh, was underneath there. So if I come down here to this one, and if I click the mouse, 
Let's get a pizza, okay? We'll get more onto that in just a moment. One of the things that was brought up in the interview was the single key quick responses. On a keyboard, there are typically characters, uh, specialty characters that you don't use often. Like, for example, the hyphen, the underscore, the equal sign, the plus sign, the left and right curly brackets, and the pipe and the backslash. So if, for example, if I press the hyphen key, no. If I press the plus, the equals key. Yes. And if I press the left bracket key. Excuse me. The right bracket key. Okay. And the backslash key. Thanks. And these can all be altered and, and reprogrammed to be whatever you need them to be. They can also be shifted to give you. Down, up, make a left, make a right. Perhaps. And like I say, these can all be modified. Another thing that we can do is, besides being able to just simply point and click, there are ways to be able to search through all of these index cards that are here and be able to get to a response that already has um, a quick recall code attached to it. Let's take, for example, this let's get a pizza. In order to be able to edit that, I come up here and unlock it. Over here in the code column, I can type LGP. I can relock this. And now if I simply on the keyboard type LGP and return, let's get a pizza, OK? It searches the entire bunch of cards that are in in the new speech stack and it arrives at the one that was there. Well, let's take a look at a couple of other ones that we might have. For example, um, I'm looking at a couple of things here. If I type SPK and then press return. I still can speak by myself, but I'm not always understood. Notice that we're no longer on the demo card, we're on the messages card. If I go and say, for example, um, COM. I use my computer for communications, word processing, email, and the like. Or how about just a simpler one? CL. I'll call later. When you take a look at all of these types of things, you see that a three-letter code is unique. It's not necessarily a word, but it is simply made up of something easy to recall from the phrase that you're trying to remember. Well, let's go to the demo again, and let's see if we can add something. So how about we unlock this? and come down here and say something like, I am really hungry. And I need to go back here and stick in another L. I am really hungry, exclamation point. OK, I lock this again. I can point to it. I am really hungry. Or. I can come over here, unlock it, and I can put a code recall on it. I-R-H. Okay, and now if I'm anywhere else, for example, if I come down here to a different card and I type I-R-H. I am really hungry. It finds the response on the appropriate card and speaks it. Another thing that you can do, besides having the quick call responses, which are fully editable, you can go through and you can do a uh, freeform response so that you can do something like, um, and now when I press the space bar, this, it speaks the word is, is a test. When you have a listener which was waiting for a message to be delivered. 
having the words spoken, each word as you are going through the sentence, keeps their attention. When you get to the end, you can do a command return. This is a test. And speak the entire thing. Well, sometimes it's not appropriate while you're composing a message to have it be spoken out loud. So if you start with a space, I've done this, it hasn't said a word, but now if I do command return, testing one, two, three. And so it goes through and gives you the ability to um, work through a free form response. That pretty much gives you the, the flavor of um, new, speech. new speech. Thank you very much, Mr. Hartley. This is Lee Hartley reporting for SA in action.